Queensland voters have handed Anastasia Palaszczuk a third term as Premier. With an overall swing to Labor, a victorious Miss Palaszczuk last night thanked those Queenslanders who voted for Labor for the first time. The LNP went backwards, but a defiant Deb Frecklington told supporters she'd continue to serve as opposition leader. These are the numbers. Counting is continuing, but Labor has secured 49 seats. The LNP 31, seven MPs make up the crossbench, while six seats are in doubt. It didn't all go Labor's way. The former Deputy Premier Jackie Trad lost to the Greens. But the night belonged to Anastasia Palaszczuk. State political reporter Stephanie Zillman begins our coverage. Let's hear it for the Premier of Queensland! Anastasia Palaszczuk has led her party to victory on margins they only dreamed about. Labor is on track to increase its majority. Queensland is the best place on earth and it is the best state in Australia. The Premier campaigned on her record of largely keeping the pandemic out of Queensland and a promise for an economic rebound. And I know that during this election, there are many people out there in Queensland who have voted Labor for the very first time. I thank you from the bottom of my heart and I will return that respect every single day. Throughout the campaign, she said the race would be tight. Labor's only upset was former Deputy Premier Jackie Trad, who lost her South Brisbane seat to the Greens. I promise you that I will roll up my sleeves tomorrow get back to work and continue to build a better Queensland. But first, a moment to savour the victory. With Oakey and Winton, named after Queensland country towns, the Premier is promising she'll govern for all. Oh. <laughs> this morning, she was joined by the newest members of her team. Come on. Jimmy, kick it off. Thanks, boss. There'll be new faces in the ministry too, but Stephen Miles will stay on as Health Minister and Deputy Premier. Cameron Dick will remain Treasurer. The Premier is taking a moment to enjoy the victory, but she's adamant they'll be getting straight to work on the budget before swearing in their Cabinet this week. And I want to congratulate Anastasia, uh, Stephen Miles and their team on what is an extraordinary victory. Anastasia Palaszczuk is the only Australian female to win three elections, on track to beat Peter Beattie's time in office, a feat drawing recognition from her opponents. The Premier is held in deep respect by the Queensland people and, and um, that's been proven again tonight. So how did the Premier celebrate? I might have had a glass of wine. Stephanie Zillman, ABC News, Brisbane. The LNP is reeling from a disappointing result, relegated to the opposition benches for another four years. But despite the poor result, Deb Frecklington has vowed to stay on as leader. Here's state political reporter Rachel Rieger. In the face of a crushing result, the party faithful rallied for Deb Frecklington. As the Premier declared victory, Miss Frecklington conceded defeat. I'd like to congratulate Anastasia Palaszczuk, but this was not our time, but our time will come. And defiantly declared she would stay on as LNP leader. And I will continue as the leader of this great party. After securing 39 seats at the last election, the LNP now looks likely to lose Caloundra, Palmerstone, Nickland, Harvey Bay and Bundaberg. It's incredibly disappointing. Um, we have to go away now and uh, lick our wounds. It's going to be really important for us as a party to look for ways that we can um, understand and connect with people in the southeast corner without losing the trust of people in the regions. After doggedly targeting marginal electorates in Townsville and Cairns, five visits to the north, bolstered by the Prime Minister Scott Morrison, proved fruitless. I think what they wanted to do was just over the top and they didn't stand a chance. I really think it probably come down to COVID being a bigger problem at the moment. A controversial curfew to crack down on youth crime didn't resonate with voters. It is absolute rot uh, and it's good the people of Townsville and Cairns have seen through it. They saw it for what it was and they've rejected it. Well, I think every policy will now be up for debate um, on tonight's result. In a silver lining, the LNP took back the seat of Whit Sunday after Jason Costigan was expelled from the party last year. 
as the LNP digests the result, many MPs and candidates have remained silent today. But discussions are already underway about the party's leadership and what went wrong at the polls. There's no one currently in this team who seems to be capable of winning an election because this was an election where perhaps we weren't going to win, but I can tell you now we should have done a darn sight better than what we have done. I can't let you go without asking if Deb Frecklington has to go as leader after this. I have absolute zero criticism of Deb. I think she's done uh, a great job under the circumstances. Deb's full of energy and, and yeah, she's ready to go again. Deb Frecklington was pleased her husband and three daughters were by her side last night, choosing to spend today with them. Rachel Rieger, ABC News. One of the most powerful and divisive figures in the Labor Party has been spurned by voters. Former Deputy Premier Jackie Trad lost her seat of South Brisbane to the Greens. Emma Pollard reports. A final pitch to South Brisbane voters. It's not just about politics. Uh, it's about standing up for the community that I love. Before it all came crashing down. We're prepared to call South Brisbane and we're saying that Jackie Trad will be defeated. The LNP's decision to put the Greens above Labor on its How to Vote cards helping the minor party. It wouldn't have happened if the LNP had had any principles whatsoever in their allocation of preferences. It's exactly well, what Labor no, did in Maywa at the last election. Her successor, Amy McMahon, is jubilant. This result tonight in South Brisbane, we've also seen big swings in McConnell and Cooper. This sends a message to the political establishment. With Jackie Trad holed up in a private function, others vented their frustrations at her defeat. The only seat the LNP can claim tonight is South Brisbane for the Greens. That is all they have achieved so far tonight. It's Labor's problem. No, no, no. It's You're Labor's the ones who did the future. It's been a swift fall from grace for a party high flyer, once considered a leadership contender. Jackie Trad worked as a Labor ministerial advisor before winning a by-election in 2012. Thank you very much. With a surprise Labor victory in 2015, Jackie Trad moved to the front bench as Deputy Premier. The controversy raged last year when the Triple C investigated her purchase of an inner city investment property. This year brought another watchdog probe over the appointment of a school principal. She was cleared, but it was all too much for a party staring down the barrel of an election campaign. I advised the Premier last night that I will be standing aside from my ministerial duties. A proud progressive from Labor's left faction, Jackie Trad cites abortion law reform and instigating the path to treaty with Indigenous people as key achievements. And I wish Jackie uh, all the very best. Jackie Trad isn't the only senior party figure calling it a night. Ministers Kate Jones, Anthony Lynham and Coralie O'Rourke have all quit politics, although their seats remain in Labor hands. Emma Pollard, ABC News. The inner city green swing that claimed Jackie Trad's scalp was a sign of a major shift in how Queenslanders voted for minor parties. One Nation's vote fell off a cliff. The fiery One Nation leader was unusually quiet on the hustings, only rarely appearing in the campaign. There were no stunts from One Nation to bring in the, the disgruntled vote. So all in all, a real flop for One Nation. Instead, party faithful switched mostly to Labor Despite standing an extra 29 candidates, One Nation secured just 6.9% of the vote, halving its 2017 performance. I actually think that we've had a, a net zero gain. There's, uh, obviously the primary focus for us at this election was certainly to have Stephen Andrew re-elected in that seat of Morani. He is One Nation's um, sole you know, MP in that. Queensland. The potential for growth of One Nation is extremely limited now and, it, and I think a lot of voters are looking at One Nation as yesterday's party. The Greens are celebrating wins in two seats. Our win here is the result of more people than ever putting the Greens first. Leader Michael Berkman returned comfortably in Maywa. We are seeing more people than ever voting for the Greens. Although city-centric, that growing green wave could be an issue for the new government. Labor now has an existential problem. How does it uh, appeal to a green collar in Brisbane and a blue collar in Western Queensland? Canada's Australian party retained its three seats, although it hoped to win more. That was always going to be a case where you're up against the mighty resources of the major parties. 
and uh, we have very meagre resources to take them on. But the popular leader, Robbie Cantor, snagged a first preference allocation of up to 60%, the safest seat in Queensland. Well done, mate, well done. As for the millions Clive Palmer spent on political advertising, his United Australia Party attracted just 11,000 votes across the entire state. There's not even a spoiler vote, there's not even a protest vote. Uh, really, I think that might be the end of Clive Palmer's political career. The billionaire spending election day on his luxury yacht with friends. Lexi Hamilton-Smith, ABC News. Let's go to our election analyst, Anthony Green, who continues to crunch the numbers. And Anthony, at the end of counting today, what's the overall position? Well, if we look at the votes, it's pretty much the same as last night. We've got two thirds of the vote counted. Labor's just over 40 per cent. The LNP bid under 36. The big change, of course, was the change, the change in vote. One Nation down 6.8 per cent. Their vote halved. The Labor vote's up nearly 5 per cent, which is quite much stronger increase than anybody expected. Now, that all translates into a new legislative assembly for the new parliament, which we're saying that the Labor Party has definitely won 49 seats. Now, that could reach 50, 51 or 52 yet. There's a few seats remaining in doubt. The LNP on 31, and at the moment, there's seven members on the crossbench. So what does remain in doubt? Well, if you look at those seats that are in doubt, We've got a, a number of seats I think the LNP will eventually pick up. The Labor Party is still ahead in Bundaberg. The LNP is ahead in Burley. They're ahead in Coomera. They're ahead in Corumban. Uh, Labor's ahead in Cook, and I think they're positioned to win that seat, which will give them 50. And Nicklin, the Labor Party's there. There's a few surprises there that Labor is ahead in Nicklin and Bundaberg is not what anyone was suggesting before the election. And I just want to say one other thing on the seats which, are cha which have changed is there's a couple of surprises here. The Labor Party has won Harvey Bay, Caloundra and Pumice Stone. Uh, nobody picked Harvey Bay. And of course, we've seen the Greens win South Brisbane. Anthony Green, thank you so much.